I want to show you the basic manufacturing process. With Dynamics GP, I'm going to show you the process from a sales forecasting all the way to the finished goods. So we'll be looking at sales forecasting, bill of materials, MRP, and the manufacturing order process. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is look at sales forecasting. In the sales forecasting window, I can look up one or more different sales forecasts that I've put together. Here I've got a sales forecast. I can have one or more products on there. I can also specify the quantity for each period of time. I can have different periods. I can have months. I can have weeks. I can have years if I want to. And I can have that out for a number of different periods. I can also have multiple products on this particular forecast. And if I have multiple forecasts, I can combine them together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sales forecast as the basis for the MRP. So I'm going to be using this pen product. This pen is a finished good item, and I've got a bill of materials associated with it. Let's take a look at the bill of materials. Here's the bill of materials for my pen. Now, I've got several levels here, because I've got three different levels. I've got the finished goods, I have some assemblies, and I've got the raw items. So, this is the bill of material, and I'm going to use this in my MRP process to explode back the components to suggest what I need to purchase. Also, I'm going to create plan manufacturing orders. So let's do that now. I've got the bill of materials, but I also need a routing. The routing specifies what stations within my process, what labor, what machines are going to be used to produce this item. So let's take a look at the one that I've set up for this bill of material. If I go into the routing sequence entry, I can open up the routing for this particular item. Here it is here. And I've got a very simple routing. It has one step, but I can have multiple steps if I wanted to. And here you can see I'm specifying the amount of labor and the amount of time it takes to create one pen. Now this is going to be used in the manufacturing process when I plan out how long it's going to take to do a particular order. Let's go ahead and run the MRP process. I can run it manually, which I'll do now, but I can also set it up to run automatically. I can do a full regeneration or a partial regeneration. I'm going to process that now. And it's done. So let's take a look at the results. What the MRP process does is look at available inventory and also available demand on that inventory. It's going to suggest purchase orders that I need to create and also work orders. Let's take a look at the work orders first. So I'm going to look at my work orders that I need for this item, the pen. And you can see here I've got demand. This is coming from the sales forecast that we looked at earlier. You can see that right here. So we've got 4,200 coming from the sales forecast. I also have some planned orders here. This, this is a result of the MRP process. It's telling me that I've got planned orders that I need to execute. So let's open up that screen here. Here it's suggesting an MRP work order that I need to open up. I can get some additional information on that. Let's open that up here. And I'm going to transfer this to a manufacturing order. Let's do that here. It's going to open up the manufacturing order. And what I can do now is I can go ahead and um, just save that. Right now it's just an open order because what I want to do is I also, before I execute this manufacturing order, I want to purchase, see if there's any items I need to purchase in order to make this item. So I'm going to save that here. So what I want to do is I want to look at the purchase orders that are being suggested. So if I, if I open up the purchase request resolution screen here, I can see all the orders that need to be executed to provide the component inventories that I need to create that finished good. Let's do um, a cutoff here. So just look at the items that I need to purchase right now. So I've got these items here, so I can go ahead and purchase those. I can select for those items to be purchased in a purchase order. And when I do that, it's going to go out and look at the default vendor and create a PO for that vendor. Here's the vendor advanced right here. I'm going to go ahead and create that PO. Hit OK. So let's take a look at that purchase order that was created. You can open up the purchase order entry screen, go to the last PO here. Here you can see the PO that was created from that MRP process when I generated the demand and then I accepted that demand. So here we go. This is the PO. I'm going to receive that now. So I've got those items in stock. I'm going to receive all those in. 
This will create the receiving transaction. I'll post that, and that will have those items in inventory to be used in the manufacturing process. Let's post that right now. So let's go back and look at that manufacturing order that was created as a result of the MRP process. Here's a manufacturing order. It's an open order right now, but I'm going to release it. It will make it available on the manufacturing floor to be built. And let's take a look at some things on this manufacturing order. I can take a look at the pick list. The pick list is going to show me all the components that are required in order to create this item. And you can see I've got those items here. So let's go and receive this out of inventory. What that means is I'm going to take it out of the manufacturing process and at that point I'm going to create the finished goods. So let's do that right here. I'm going to the receipt entry here. And it's going to take that manufacturing order. It's going to take all those components out of the component the inventory. It's going to create the finished good item. I set this item to be a simple back flush item. And you can see the components here. And you can see the quantities are going to be taken out of the component inventory and turned into the finished good. So all we need to do now is we need to post this. If we wanted to, to post partial quantities, but I'm going to post the entire manufacturing order right now. So let's do that. So when it does that, what it's going to do is back flush the component quantities and also add the finished good inventory with the quantity specified. We can always go back to the manufacturing order and take a look at it. Let's do that here. There's a lot of information that's available from the manufacturing order. We can go to this variant screen down here and we get a full picture of what quantities of materials were used, what labor was used to create the finished goods. So here's a view, a snapshot view of material that was used in this item and also the labor that was assigned to that item. So you can see that here. This is a quick view of how to use the manufacturing process within Dynamics GP from a sales forecast to the finished good items.